Let solve questions 36 to 40 of test 1 of IELTS Reading Academic Cambridge Book 18. The question type of these questions is matching features. The first step I follow when solving this question type is that I scan the passage for these names to check where and how often these names are mentioned in the passage. In this passage, Caroline Freud is mentioned only in the second paragraph of section B, Craig in section C, Marlon Sog in section D, and Moriba Ja is mentioned in section E and also in both the paragraphs of section F. The next thing I do is that I read and understand each of these statements in the question identifying the words that I'll keep in mind as I scan the passage for information. On your screen, these words are underlined. After this, I start looking for answers in the passage. In matching features question type, I don't always go in order of the names given in the question. I start with whichever name is mentioned the least number of times in the passage. Here, however, I will start from A because there is only one name which is mentioned in more than one paragraph, which is D. This instruction, you may use any letter more than once, is very important in this question type. It is rather obvious in this case because we have five statements and four people to choose from. But there are times when we have maybe four statements and four people and still this instruction is there. Another thing to keep in mind is that very often the answers of these questions come from something that these people have said. So either it will be in direct quotes or it will be mentioned that this person has said this thing. Let's start with the second paragraph of section B now. We have a very short statement of what Caroline Freud has said, and this statement is in quotes. If we go on like this, we will reach a point of no return. A point of no return means a time or a stage at which we cannot go back and change things or change a decision that we have made. The sentence before this one talks about there being crashes in space and there being a lot of debris in space. So what Freud is saying here is that if this keeps happening, we'll reach a stage after which we cannot improve the situation. The 40th question says, there is a risk we will not be able to undo the damage that occurs in space. Undo the damage means to improve things or to change things. And there is a risk means there is a possibility in future. So Freud is also saying that if we continue like this, in future, this may happen. The answer to the 40th question is A. Let's move on to Holger Craig now. He is mentioned only in section C. Let's start with the sentence where he is mentioned for the first time. But so far, only about half of all missions have abided by this 25-year goal. I'll now read the sentence before this one to understand what this 25-year goal is. The intergovernmental groups advise lowering satellites deep enough into the atmosphere that they will burn up or disintegrate within 25 years. We don't necessarily need to understand the exact technical meaning of this. There is some advice about where the satellites should be so that they'll burn up in 25 years. But Craig is saying that only half of the space missions since then have followed this advice. The 38th question says, a recommendation regarding satellites is widely ignored. The recommendation is the advice and widely ignored because only half the missions are following it. The answer to the 38th question is, B. We continue with the same section, section C, because we can see that Craig has said some other things as well. So we had read till here before. Let's continue with the next sentence. 
operators say they'll be responsible stewards in their enterprises in space, but Craig worries that problems could increase despite their best intentions. This does not seem to match with any of the statements that we have in the question. One thing to notice here is that it helps to focus on the important parts of the sentence when we are trying to understand the main meaning of it. So instead of reading operators of the planned large constellations of satellites, I just read operators and moved on. We are talking about operators of satellites. We don't need to focus on the whole thing. This helps us understand the meaning quickly. Moving on to the option C, we have Marlon Sorg. Sorg is mentioned only in section D. Let's start with the sentence in direct quotes, which is what he has said. If you knew precisely where everything was, you would almost never have a problem. Where everything was means the location, precisely means exact, and not having a problem means preventing possible danger. The answer to the 36th question is C. Now we start with option D, Moribaja, who is mentioned in both sections E and F. So I'll start with section E. The first sentence tells me that this is about space traffic management. And through the paragraph, managing traffic in space is compared to managing traffic in the air or on roads. On your screen, some parts of this paragraph are in bold. Just looking at these parts give you some idea about what the paragraph is about. And it doesn't seem like any of the statements that were given in the question match with this paragraph. But Moribaja is mentioned in section F as well, which has two paragraphs. So let's read section F now. So the first paragraph of section F tells us that the answer to the 39th question is D. However, this information is spread over a lot of sentences in the paragraph. The orbits mentioned here are where the satellites are in space. And JAR talks about a method of figuring out where the satellites are. With this sentence in the passage, he later says that it doesn't always work. Only this doesn't quite work for a number of objects. Because sometimes, from this method, one gets two different locations of a satellite. Whenever we have information spread over a lot of sentences, there are two things we do to understand them quickly. One is we do not focus on examples or additional details. On your screen, all the parts of the sentence which have examples are in red. These parts we do not need to focus on. Secondly, start reading every single sentence of the paragraph. Wherever you think you understand what the sentence is saying, start skipping information. The parts of the paragraph that I focused on when I was trying to understand the gist of the paragraph are in bold on your screen. The first half of the paragraph corresponds to where some satellites are in space from the question. And the second half of the paragraph corresponds to the conflicting information part of the question because the information sometimes has two different results or is confusing. The answer to the 39th question is D. We are now left with only one paragraph. Here Ja says, I want to make space a place that is safe to operate, that is free and useful for generations to come. Free means available to everyone. Generations to come refers to future. The answer to the 37th question is also D. A quick tip here. More often than not, future is mentioned towards the end of the passage. If the question is talking about future, I always start looking in the last paragraph first. With this, we are done with questions 37 to 40. After this, we are left with just questions 
27 to 31 of this test. I'll soon upload the answers to these questions as well. That's it for now. Hope this helped you. All the very best.